Hey guys, welcome to the Midweek Refresher. I was talking to a spiritual mentor of mine just a little bit ago, and he was saying that he read an article about how <clears throat> the church really needs to be united right now um, since our nation is, is so divided. And I thought, man, that is, that's really true. It sounds great. Um, it, it also sounds kind of impossible, doesn't it? I mean, it sounds like one of those like pithy statements you throw out there that doesn't really hold any water because it's impossible to actually accomplish. But I don't want to just throw that away. So I was looking and thinking about this prayer that Jesus prays, and I want to leave it with you. So there's, there's no way that I can like in three minutes say like how we can be united in such a divided time in our country. But I, you know, I think that would be like making too light of the actual very real issues that we're dealing with. I get it. You know, like I, I care and I care about these things. I think politics are important. The election's important. The issues are very important. I get all of that stuff. And yet somehow while holding all of that, if we're following of Jesus, we also have to hold the will of God. And we also have to submit all of those things, our, our party affiliation, our, our, you know, ideals and ideologies, our beliefs and who we vote for. And all of that needs to be held in submission to the kingdom of God, right? If we're followers of Jesus. And so what do we do with this prayer? I want to read it to you. And I want to just like not give you any answers because I, this is something I think I need to learn. I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't know, but let's we have to read the word of God and allow it to work into our hearts and, and we can't ignore it. And so Jesus says this, right? He says, my prayer is not for them alone. Now he's sitting in the garden of Gethsemane about to go to the cross, just a frame of reference. He's about to go pay the penalty for my sins. And this is what he's praying about me. And he's about to go pay the penalty for your sins. And this is what he's praying about you. And he says, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So he's finished praying with the disciples who are around him. And he prays this. Now he could pray anything, right? He could pray for us to have in powerful signs and wonders, for us to be incredible missionaries, for us to write thousands of books. But he, he prays a very simple prayer. He says, I pray that all of them may be one. Out of all the things he could have picked, he picked a unity. And I think... I think he knew that there's something powerful to us being unified. In fact, he says that he prays this so the world will know that the Father sent him, that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Our unity is a sign to the world of God's love for them. Did you catch that? Our unity in, I would say, especially in divisive times, right? Somehow, followers of Jesus are supposed to be able to find a way to find unity, even in divisive times, especially in divisive times, so that other people can know that God loves them. There were to be a sign of God's love for all the world. And I think you can kind of see like when Christians fight and get petty and get mean, it really ruins our, our witness, our testimony, our story that we tell the world about who Jesus is. Like you see it, don't you? And so how do we, how do we change that? Um, how do I change that in my life? How do I live more according to that in such a divided time? How do I live in unity with other brothers and sisters in Christ, with other people who follow Jesus? Can my love for them, even my affection for them, be greater than my disagreement with them? I mean, I'll tell you, like, honestly, for me, and I, I'm sure you're the same, like, when I disagree with someone sharply, it's a lot easier to just write them off, right? And and discount them or, or somehow discount their, their beliefs and you know, but what would happen if I just was like choosing to love them, choosing to be affectionate towards them, choosing to bless them or do good to them or pray for them? You know, all the things Jesus said for us to do for our enemies, right? He said, you've heard it said, just love your neighbors. But I tell you, love your enemies, do good to them, pray for them, bless those who persecute you. Like somehow we're, that's our enemies. We're not talking about our enemies right now, hopefully. These are brothers and sisters. We're talking about followers of Jesus in the family of God that we share the same spirit, the same baptism, the same communion, the same salvation. We share that with them. Have we become so divided that we need to start treating them like we treat our enemies? And if that's true, we should probably start treating them better than we are treating them now because he calls us to treat our enemies pretty well. Love them, bless them, do good to them, pray for them. That's the call. And I don't, I, I just feel like the call of Jesus on the church is so much higher than we're living up to, that, that I'm living up to. I'm not going to put on anybody else, okay? Than I'm living up to. And I feel challenged reading this to love people I disagree with more and better. Maybe I could have conversations and hear them out. Maybe I could 
tell them that I appreciate what they're posting because it's challenging me to think. Maybe I can reach out to them and tell them I'm praying for them. Maybe I can find ways to bless them. Maybe I can buy them dinner and hang out with them. Maybe I can establish affection and rapport and relationship around things we can agree upon. I'm just throwing out ideas. I don't know. I'm, I'm, so I don't want to answer any questions, right? This is bigger than a three minute, four minute thing here. And I, and I don't want to devalue it in, in any way, right? I just want to say, this is Jesus's prayer. We should think about how to apply it to our lives in this divided time. I pray also for those who will believe that all of them may be one. How do we, how do we follow that and live that out in this time? So that's my my gift to you today. I'm sure you really want to hear that. Um, I don't have the answers, but let's pray about it and let's, let's walk it out together. Okay. Um, this Sunday, I'm so excited. Mandy is going to teach. I know I said she would last time, but, uh, we, we changed the schedule. She is teaching this week. It's going to be great and you're not going to want to miss it. So 10 o'clock at the movie theater or on Facebook or YouTube. We'll see you then.